Okay, let's move into week three. So okay. it's always more fun to talk about future football than my own team getting stomped in week two. So let's <laughs> <laughs> starts Friday night. Florida State is at Louisville. Um, I, I'm just gonna say it. I feel like I have little to no idea what's gonna happen here, but I do think that this is probably a game that leans more towards Florida State than we would have thought in the off season. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, agreed. I I also have zero idea of what's going to happen there. <laughs> sure. Saturday, Oklahoma is at Nebraska. Just mentioned that a little bit ago. Obviously, this is Scott Frost now gone. So this was supposed to be a huge game. Does Nebraska, like, find a way to come together now their coach is gone and make it tough and win by one score, lose by one score again? Or is this just a boat racing? See, we don't know. That's so hard. We don't know. We don't know what the – it's a new coach. Like, are their players just going to quit? Like, or maybe, maybe they had already quit and maybe then that, maybe now they're going to come back. Like, like you always, you always hear that when there's a coach that he's about to get fired in the NFL, when the coach goes ahead and gets fired and you get a new guy, the next week, the players are better. Like they cover the spread. It just, that seems to always be the side that it's on. I I have no idea what's going to happen. I don't know like the dynamics of the locker room. And unless you have knowledge of how Nebraska's locker room is taking this, you don't really know what side to bet here. Like you, it's going to be, it could be entertaining. That but line saying, is like, is going down, by the way. Oklahoma's only an 11, uh, 11 or 11 and a half point favorite. It's so low. Like, that's way <laughs> – Oklahoma has been good. They've, they've, they've hammered the teams they're supposed to play – or supposed to hammer, rather. And Nebraska has been – they just lost to Georgia Southern. Like, yeah, like at home. So, I know it's a, it's a home game, and I'm sure that, like, the crowd will be going bonkers there in Lincoln, Nebraska. But, yeah, 11 and a half is suspicious. That number there is – suspiciously low we'll say sure number one georgia at south carolina any any thoughts here like i think we all kind of know what to expect here but what are you yeah. looking for as a georgia fan in this game well south carolina can't stop the run like they just showed yeah. that they gave up <laughs> they they gave up five rushing touchdowns to arkansas georgia has a really really good offensive line mm-hmm. and is going to try to just do the same thing again I don't think this one will be that close. I don't like, yeah. there, I mean, there's a, there's a chance, but Georgia's looked as impressive as anyone to start out the year. Um, yeah. If you feel sorry for Arkansas, you go like, you just get pretty much just playing just road graders of teams, like offensive lines to just come and just pave the way. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, I see, I see probably more of that happening this week. Yeah. Cal is at Notre Dame. Um, I mentioned it just because, I don't know if you hate Notre Dame and you want to see them lose, like maybe they lose another close game. I doubt it, but <laughs> it could happen. You never know. <laughs> What's the line on that? What's the line? Uh, I believe it's been moving. Let me check to see what we're at right now. I'm sorry. As I look this up real quick. Uh, looks like yeah. Notre Dame minus 10 and a half. Oh, wow. The disrespect, the disrespect is high, right? Is now. it though? Yeah. I, well, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I, I would be leaning, I would be leaning um, Notre Dame in that, but yeah, again, I would just leaning Notre Dame last week. So what do I, I think I, I would too, because I think Cal is pretty terrible. The one thing Cal generally does pretty well under Justin Wilcox is play defense. So there's a chance that yeah, Drew Pine could have two interceptions. One could be a pick six and, yeah, you could you could have some weird seventeen to thirteen type of ball game. Don't don't write it off. It it could happen. Okay. Um, and more fun football, um, just because the one team actually plays offense. Ole Miss is at Georgia Tech. Yes. Um, don't know. There's a whole lot to talk about there, but it does feel like there's it's at least somewhat notable. And if for nothing else, it gives us a bit of a measuring stick for both teams. I I think there's been some debate about how good Ole Miss is this year. Jackson Dart is improving. Like mm-hmm. he he's getting better. I think settling in um, to that offense, and we know Kiffin has it. It's it, all his offenses are very quarterback friendly. Um, yeah, I, I it's it's going to be entertaining just to see how Jackson Dart like Dart could he could put up legit Heisman numbers in that offense if everything yeah if everyone stays healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think just keeping an eye out on that old Miss offense is probably the thing that you need to do the most. Sure. Okay, Penn State is at Auburn. Penn State a three-point favorite. <sighs> Any idea what's going to happen in this game? <laughs> no, it's Auburn. <laughs> Auburn's one of my darlings for the year, and and they're two and zero. Oh, and like 
man, they were so <laughs> bad. Like they trailed San Jose State for large sections of that football game. Penn State has a really good defense. It's it's in Auburn, which I think the crowd's going to be going bananas. Nationally televised game. Literally anything could happen here. Yeah. Literally anything. Like if you're betting money, this is like just a roulette. Just it's absolutely a roulette wheel. You might yeah. win, you might not. But if you do win, don't act like there's skill involved here because yeah. you do not know what's going on with this Auburn football team right now, which is kind of the fun. That's kind of why I had them as one of the darlings because it's they're they're more talented than you think, and it could be really entertaining. Yeah, if you are betting on this game, you need to take a long, hard look in the mirror and just yeah. <laughs> reevaluate your life choices. <laughs> you're a degenerate. If you're if you're really betting on this one, you are confirmed a degenerate. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, so BYU has a lot of good games this year. This has kind of been a talking point for us in the in the off season. They go to Oregon this yeah. Saturday. Oregon is a three and a half point favorite. M- makes no sense. Does, yeah. Shouldn't it be switched around? Makes that that makes th- this line makes zero sense at all. I understand Oregon; it's a home game for Oregon, but Oregon got beat up by Georgia, like completely beat up by a physical football team. BYU is also a physical football team. Like, yeah, yeah, I I don't understand the the line here. Vegas is seeing things that I'm not seeing. It's again, we talk about suspicious lines. This is one of those. It's a line that's it's enough in one direction that like, it feels like, like Vegas sees something that we don't. So maybe Oregon is the side. It's definitely the side that Vegas is on. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just keeping an eye on that one. It's over. It's, it's over three, it's three and a half. Like you can lose. Yeah. You can. Yeah. I don't understand how it's so high, but I I'd hate to, I'd hate to have it be that high and still be betting Oregon, but Oregon's probably the play here. Like I'm kind of Mm -hmm. leaning that direction right now. Um, Mm -hmm. I, yeah hate betting on Bo Nix. Absolutely hate betting on Bo Nix, but I might be doing it. <laughs> okay, so this game probably would have been a little more notable in the offseason. Liberty at Wake Forest. Sam Hartman's back. Wake Forest seems to be basically Wake Forest the last year. Liberty, in the meantime, lost their quarterback. So, yeah. Any reason to at least check the score on this one? The The thing that I thought was really interesting is there's there's a chance that – um Hugh Freeze gets some Nebraska hype like like who's going to be the coach at Nebraska oh, yeah. now I've heard his name floated already could make um, sense if he absolutely yeah right he comes out hey they'll sell their soul for a quick result and we know if Hugh <laughs> Freeze he will all do the same so yeah th- that could be it could be interesting say he gets beat up bad by Wake Forest and decides hey you know what I can go play in the Big Ten um and take my cool offensive ideas out there so what you're saying is if he found a way to beat Wake Forest that might help his chances uh, well, I mean, I think I, I I think it's more the other way around. I think Nebraska would take him if he would have them. Sure. Uh, more than yeah, more than Makes the reverse sense. way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have an interesting, to say the least, SEC matchup. Mississippi State is at LSU, six o'clock yeah. Saturday night. Mississippi State, a one and a half or two point favorite. Kind of feels like. We have no idea what to expect yet again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you feel like no. you have a read on this game? No, no, not really. <laughs> it's, it's another one of these games where LSU is very similar to Auburn. We don't know. We absolutely yeah. don't know what to expect. LSU, after the debacle that was the Florida State loss, the absolute debacle, they come out and hammer Southern. Not George yeah. Southern, just Southern. So take that for what you will. But I think they set the record. They scored 37 points in the first quarter. That's yeah. very difficult to do against air. Like, yeah. that's impressive. So, yes, maybe the offense has found something. Maybe I, there's something to that. Mississippi State is a really good football team. Yeah. LSU has a lot of talent. We're not going to say they're a good football team yet. I expect this to be a – yeah, I think the line is exactly right. I view it as like a coin flip game. Um, I would be – sneaky on lsu right now at home yeah night game in baton rouge like sign me up for that i'll i'll take a a good home dog um especially if it's in baton rouge so i'm probably going to be on the lsu side there um mm-hmm. not super confident though yeah you mentioned that you don't really know what to expect that lsu I, that's how i feel about mississippi state a little bit <laughs> i yeah well, i yeah. i actually think that they are i i would say they're probably more like a touchdown better than lsu 
but there's just right. no way. Right. Like like you said, this is a night game at LSU. You don't know which Mississippi State team will show up. You don't know if Mike Leach is going to make the other team look absolutely silly or yeah. if he is just going to be confounded because he can't figure it out. We've seen both. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> watch this game. Watch this game. Don't bet on it. He's yeah, no, uh, agreed. He he's he's got uh Leach has a couple of games a year where he comes out and you're like, this guy is brilliant. Like mm-hmm. this guy is absolutely phenomenal. And then he yeah, then he spent the rest of the year reminding you why he's still, you know, at Mississippi State and Washington State and Texas Tech, and now he's not getting any like super, super high name jobs. Cause you can watch some of his games and you're like, well, oh, so he played he played LSU in 2020, right after they mm-hmm. won the the championship. And like completely dumbfounded their defense. Yeah. It was really just a simple crossing route. Turns out all you had to do is drop eight and play zone coverage yeah. and you completely <laughs> stop that offense. But we didn't know that at the time. And yeah, like he'll come out with some of those things. Will Rogers, his quarterback, has been really good. He's mm-hmm. that that dude is a really, really good quarterback. Yeah, LSU has talent. I think there will be some points put up in this game. Um, I'm it's gonna be fun. Must watch, must watch TV. Sure. It will be one of my five games to watch, no doubt. All right. Texas Tech is at NC State. Um, kind of a fascinating matchup. I, I was, I've been on NC State all off season. Like I kind of view them as, it, as a ch- the team that has a chance to win the ACC if, if Clemson is not back. And they've been just, they haven't quite performed to expectations so far. It's early. This right. is, this feels like a, like a good. This is an opportunity for NC State to finally say, no, we're for real. They're favored by ten and a half. I think they need to cover the spread for us to actually say, okay, they might actually be for real because Texas tech, they're, they're a bit of a sneaky team. They just beat Houston, which is not yes. nothing. I, no. Texas tech is pretty decent. What do you think about Texas, this game? Yeah, no agreement. Texas tech has shown a lot of improvement um, in just from, from last year, really like they're, this will, it'll be a, they're, they're a, a team that is, you mentioned a sneaky beating Houston you, you said it's, it's nothing to sneeze at. Houston's mm-hmm. a good football team. And yeah. You, uh, yeah, you go there and beat them. So Texas, NC State, Texas Tech, you get a – there's only so many games that – or so many games per year that NC State will be on national TV. This is one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, night game, ESPN2. I, like, you can see how this it, – it could be it could be close. This is at Texas Tech. Is that right? This is in uh, Texas? I believe it's at NC State. Yeah, no, you're right. It's in Raleigh. Okay, sorry. So, that, yeah, maybe it takes a little bit of the shine shine off the game. I think Lubbock is absolutely bonkers for yeah. games. Um, it's like on like a night game on national TV when you know Texas Tech is back. All mm-hmm. these Texas schools trying to get back, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, NC State is is the better football team. Like, there's no question. Um, Clemson has shown a little bit of similar stuff to last year. Maybe just with their offense. I mean, we can get into Clemson maybe more in a bit, but. Like they have not been great. This is a all the opportunities for NC State right now. Like it's mm-hmm. all out there in front of them. So it, yeah, you need to win. I don't know if you need to cover to be impressed. If you win, say say you win by ten, like totally fine with it. You you take okay. the wins against solid football teams. Um, it just it's it's that Clemson game is a game that you really really need. This one here, you just need to survive in advance if you're um, the Wolfpack. Makes sense. Okay, Michigan State is at Washington. This is – okay, so last year this would not have been close. Washington's offense the last several years has been trash. terrible. They, yeah. They've been putting up points this year, and I I kind of compared yeah. them in the offseason to Tennessee last year and the way mm-hmm. just having a competent offensive staff can turn a pretty talented team from just horrible offense mm-hmm. into actually being able to put up points. And right. so because of that, I do think this is – this could be a really fun game. Vegas agrees. Washington is favored by three here. Um, know, they're unranked, and Michigan State is number eleven in the country. <laughs> so what? Someone's lying. Yeah, someone is yeah. absolutely lying to us. You mentioned Washington putting up points. Your boy from Indiana, the transfer out there, is the yeah. quarterback. Michael and Penix playing really well. Mm-hmm. Michigan State's running the ball at an exceptional rate. We can say that. Like Michigan sure. State is is going, they're they're trying to do what they did what they did again last year, and they've they've hammered two teams to start out the year. I don't know where to go with this one. Like the line is so fishy. That line, there's no <laughs> way that the number eleven team in the country should be a three point dog 
to unranked Washington, who was not good last year. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I don't. But would you be shocked if Washington no. covered? You wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> I, you might be uh, surprised, but I would be. Yeah, yeah. I, I would be a little surprised. I think I'm gonna Michigan State's the side for me. I'm a Mel Tucker guy. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a believer in what he's doing there. Um, maybe that, that could be to my own detriment, but so be it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm probably going to be moving on the Michigan State side of three and a half. You can still lose by a field goal and cover. Like, sign me up for all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, you're you've been a Washington guy though. Like, wh- why why should Washington be favored in this game? Ooh, I thought you were going to ask me why Washington can win the game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I think part of it is just the way they've been scoring. They've just okay. been playing. Okay, so let me just look up last week's game. I can't remember the exact score. So they beat Portland State 52-6. to six. Portland State, sure. nobody. But last year, there's not a they don't have a prayer of scoring 52 points against anybody. And right. we know they have at least a fairly talented defense. They have a good receiving core. They're finally getting good quarterback play. I like Kalen DeBoer. I, I really think that was a great hire by them. Yeah. Um. I don't know if I'm saying they should be favored. There's definitely a route for them to win this game. I do think if you factor in the strength of their offense is that receiving core and the passing game, where does Michigan State struggle on defense? Yeah. It's the second. No, year. fair Fair enough. Yeah, they have they're terrible at defending the pass going back to last year. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I that's a compelling argument. That's a very compelling. I, I, I was kind of won over by that one, really. You have <laughs> like like that is absolute Michigan State's kryptonite. A guy that can sit there and scheme up like good offensive shot plays down the field, which is Kalen DeVore's specialty. Like yep. they're throwing the ball all over the yard for big chunks, too. We're not mm-hmm. talking about just like little yards. They're throwing the ball for like chunks. That's 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 Michigan State's kryptonite. So yeah, okay, it makes it makes a little bit more sense now that you like pull all that together for me. I I, I still like Michigan State. I don't know. I like that ball control offense. We'll, we'll see how I feel here in a minute. Sure, a, a little bit of a clash of styles, which is always it fun. Is. I think. Yeah, enjoy yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> okay, let's move on to the next game. This is a game that uh, you probably won't be able to watch unless you happen to get this channel i'm just saying pay attention to the score just for the first quarter maybe the first half and maybe it leads into the fourth quarter eventually utsa is at texas this is on the longhorn network unfortunately (laughs) texas is an 11 point favorite now we know texas is way better than utsa but utsa is tough and texas is coming off that emotional loss they lost quinn ewers just saying it's something to watch out for Mm mm-hmm Mm-hmm. I, I like where your mind's at. I really like where your mind's at. It's a game I will not be able to watch. I do not get the Same. Longhorn Network along with 99% of other Americans. Yeah. Um, the line is 11 and UTSA is really good. This is a classic letdown spot coming off that emotional game, losing yep. a quarterback. Like you said, it has, yes, it has all the chances to, to be sneaky, sneaky late into the game, I would not put anything on Texas to cover 11. Like no. the, the only I'd put a couple of bucks on UTSA, maybe to win outright, like just a couple, yeah. um, like just sprinkle a few bucks in there on that. That's other than that, I would pretty much just stay away from the game as a whole. Sure. OK, Miami, Florida is at Texas A&M. Yes. And a five or five and a half point favorite, depending where you look. Yeah. We've heard. Yeah. We we just saw AM lose to App State. Um, Miami can score points. We know this. Yeah. Um I don't know. Like <laughs> is was that a wake up call for AM? Like where they bounce back, or is this just like should Miami be favored by five and a half points? <laughs> uh, dude, I don't know. Like the, the... Like the quarterback play is so drastic from Miami to to AM. Like they're gonna have such a huge advantage at quarterback. Van yeah. Dyke is playing really well to start this year out. Haynes King has not been good at all. Mm-hmm. Like I what else am I supposed to say? Like what else am I really supposed to take from it? I AM is definitely the more talented team and they're at home. I mean, mm-hmm. cool, I guess, great, but yeah, like I mean, 
Miami has a juggernaut of an offense right now, and A&M can't score. Like, why am I supposed to put put any points at all? But then, yeah, all you have to do is think back to last year a little bit, where A&M can can, yeah, they can they can play with anyone. Like we've already we've already found that out. They can absolutely play with anyone. Maybe they were looking ahead. There's a chance they were looking ahead past App State to to the Miami game. And now that game's just out of the way. And now they're really ready and take out some frustration on Miami. Anything could happen. Like we don't have much of a sample size for what Cristobal is doing at Miami. Um, I mean, it's very small, only two games in. He's been exceptional to Mm -hmm. this point. I mean, they're off to a flyer. So, yeah, I mean, props to them. I would be probably, probably leaning on Miami to cover five and a half just because that feels like a large number right now. So tell me why I I shouldn't make that a lock because I I decided at this point I'm kind of against it just because it feels almost like it's too scary, but but it makes so much sense. Like, why shouldn't I pick Miami to cover five and a half? I have no real reason for you. Like that's where I would be going with it as well. Like what, what has A&M shown me in their first couple of games? They struggled in their first game too. We kind of forgot about that on offense. They were not good at all. Like what, what, what have they shown me to think that like they're going to come be able to come out and score 30 points. Cause they're probably going to need to come out and score 30 points to cover five and a half against a really good Miami offense. Like Miami can score points. Like, no, I have no real rebuttal to that because, like, I'm on, I'm with you. I'm on the same side. I'd be taking Miami um, in the five and a half. And yeah, shaking your hand out the door as I go. Sure. Okay. So we have St- San Diego State at Utah. Um, okay. San Diego State won this game last year somehow. Any concern here at all for Utah? They are a 21 point favorite. None at all. I look at what Utah did. Um, granted, they were only playing Southern Utah this past week, but they scored 73 points. I haven't mm-hmm. seen 73 points scored in a long time. That's very hard to do. We talked about how great it was that LSU scored. I think LSU scored 37 in the first quarter. Well, Utah scored 38 in the second quarter this past week that we mentioned that's difficult to do against air. So yeah. Yeah, they lost to this team last year. You have the whole revenge game factor. I think Utah overall is very well coached. They will be ready for this game. I think they're going to rebound quite well. 21 is the number. That's exactly three touchdowns. Maybe not Maybe not even going to bet on that, but I think Utah would be the side that I would be going on. Okay. And then one last game I wanted to mention just real quick. Fresno State is at USC. Um, Fresno State has been Pac-12 killers in the past. Um, USC looks really good. Kind of the yeah. same as the Utah question. Like it feels like USC should win this game. Is there any any chance here that we see an upset? The line's only 12, which I mean proves to you that like this game is actually going to be sneaky close. Fresno State is they're good. They lost they lost to Boer. Um, like you mentioned, he went to went to Washington now from from a year ago. And he was mm-hmm. kind of their I don't know, I don't know if you want to say their secret sauce upsetting some of these teams but he kind of was like he i mean he was he's a really really good coach i think usc their offense right now is good enough to cover two touchdowns against fresno state like for me this is borderline slam dunk like i'm going to be going with usc again to win and to cover not the only concern is the defense like just getting run to death which is still a possibility it's going to happen yeah. at some point this year it's absolutely going True. to happen someone's just going to show up and just run the ball for 500 yards against that defense i don't think fresno state's the team to do it i think usc will continue um rolling i th- i love what their offense is doing addison caleb williams it's all working travis die is scoring touchdowns now yeah it's working right now for usc 